Welcome, welcome back to an asana a day keeps the vrittis away. Today we're going to focus on Ardha Chandrasana and Parvritta Ardha Chandrasana. So it is two poses, um, but they're in the same family. And uh, what you might need to practice with me is a chair, a mat, a floor, a block, a belt, and a wall, a free wall that you can be against. If you don't have a clear free wall, um, easy to access, um, you can just put your sticky mat uh, next to your dining room table uh, and use the edge of the table uh, for the same support that will use the wall. I've done that before and it works great. So, Ardha Chandrasana, Parvritta Ardha Chandrasana. I just demonstrate the pose on one side uh, so that you can see the pose and then we'll practice together. So I start like a starfish. And I expand from my center outward to my periphery like a starfish. So this is Ardha Chandrasana and Paravritta, same leg, opposite hand goes down and you, Paravritta, you rotate, you turn, spiraling, the revolved half moon, Paravritta Ardha Chandrasana. And so those are the poses that we're working with and I'm going to Take this pose with a lot of support with the chair um, and progress it so that we're eventually working in the center of the room. So you have some things you can work with over time to make your way there. Um, but we are going to work with some key uh, movements that we need in the hips and legs um, first before we jump right into the pose. So join me in Tadasana in the center of your mat. We're gonna take the feet hip width apart and parallel. Align your body, the weight of your body, so that it funnels down through your hips into your legs, into your heels and into the earth. The ball of the foot is grounded, the toes are light. All right, so from this mountain pose, we're gonna press down through the left leg, through the left heel from your hip so that we can bring our right foot up off the floor. And we're just going to play with a movement in the hip, external rotation and internal rotation. So my foot looks like a little windshield wiper here, and this movement is coming from the hip socket, the femur bone rolling around, internally rotating, externally rotating in the hip socket. Good. And we'll bring that leg down. Transition your weight from your right hip, push down through the leg, into the heel, growing tall so you can lift your left foot off the floor. And again, some internal, external rotation in the hip socket. So spiraling in and out, getting that movement, juicing up that joint, and at the same time getting some practice standing on one leg, strengthening my hip. Good, and then bring that leg to the floor. So what we just did, that was a great practice in itself, but we're gonna do that laying on the floor. So when we're laying on the floor, you understand what that leg is doing. So come on down onto your mat, and if you, um, when you lay on the floor, if your head tips back, um, please grab a towel or a blanket or something so that you're not laying here doing the whole uh, pose, the, all the work like that. Um, reach the base of the skull away from your shoulders, let your chin drop down, and just take a moment to be on the floor, let your legs flop. Take a breath here. And then right now my legs are like Shavasana. They're relaxed, they're flopping out away from the midline, but I'm going to bring them into a position like Tadasana, like we were just standing in that mountain pose. So my knee and my toes are pointing straight up. The, the legs are hip width apart, reaching out through the heels, reaching out through the ball of the foot. And you can just take your arms away 
uh, from the midline. So I'm going to extend through my left leg, just like we did standing, to bring some stabilization so I can lift my right leg up and internally and externally rotate my right leg. We just did this standing, now we're doing it laying on the floor. So this movement in the hip socket is going to be um, helpful when we go into our Ardha Chandrasana and Parvrita. Um, so now, just bend that leg so that your thigh is perpendicular and your foot is a little bit higher than your knee. Now we're going to explore some circles. So I have to stay dynamic in my left leg so that I don't go flopping around on the floor as we take the right leg out to the right and making a big circle as I extend the leg down and begin to straighten the knee. So now my right leg is next to my left leg. It's still floating in the air and it's still externally rotated. Then I'm going to rotate so that the knee and the toes are facing the ceiling and then internally rotate so the knee and the toes are looking across the midline which is where they're going to go and the knee leads so the knee is leading a big circle right back up to where we started let's do one more keep your left side stable reach through your left heel as you very slowly make a big circle with your right leg external rotation transitioning to internal rotation, crossing the midline, and coming all the way around and back up. And we're going to switch directions. So now I'm taking the knee across the midline, making a big semicircle all the way back down toward the other leg. And I'm doing this slowly. My leg is internally rotated, and now I'm beginning to externally rotate it as it's in this extended position and then draw it back up. Let's go one more circle in this direction, crossing the midline, moving slowly to really build up your strength, transition from internal rotation to external rotation and back around and up. And then let's take this leg down to the floor just relax, let your legs um, kind of just flop apart. The feet will flop away from the midline, more like Shavasana legs than Tadasana. And take a moment here to notice how this feels. Good, and then we'll do the other side. So bring your legs back to Tadasana. The right leg is going to be our anchor just like the leg we were standing on in Tadasana, reach through your heel, reach through the ball of the foot so your left leg can come up, and then play around in that hip socket, internal and external rotation. Just a little bit of movement there. Good, and then bend the knee so your thigh is perpendicular to the earth, and your left foot is a little bit higher than your knee. So the ankle is just high, a little bit higher up than my knee. And we're gonna make a big circle. So drawing that knee up, out, and around. Keeping the right leg reaching so that your right hip, it's gonna be lighter on the floor, but it's not coming off the floor. And as your left leg extends completely, you're still in external rotation. It's like the inner thigh wants to look at the ceiling. Transition to internal rotation and begin to cross the midline. Making that big circle all the way back up and we'll do another one. So out, up and out to the side, all the way around, moving slowly so we really challenge our stabilizing strength and the strength of our hip and our leg. And we're coming back up to the beginning spot. And now we'll switch directions. So cross the midline, spiraling the leg 
down towards the right leg, transition from internal to external rotation, bending your knee as you trace this big circle back up to the beginning, and one more. Crossing the midline, taking the leg back down, and from internal rotation to external rotation, and then the knee going out to the side and back up. And then we'll rest this leg down on the floor and just let your legs flop. Let the feet drop away from the midline. Take a deep breath. Good. Now, if that's challenging for you, repeat that. You know, work on that. Make that part of your everyday play as that becomes stronger. Um, another way to um, challenge yourself with that, and we won't take the time now to do it, but a way to progress that is to do the whole thing with the arms off the floor, right? So you can, you can do that whole practice, and you could even hold something like a little ball or something in your hands. The more you take your arms overhead, the more challenging that is. So that's an option. So the next pose we're going to do is um, a variation on Supta Parangustasana. And this is where you will need um, possibly a belt or a scarf or um, some kind of, uh, maybe even a towel if you don't have a belt or a scarf that you could use. Um, so I'm going to show this uh, with the belt and then I'm going to show it without the belt. Um, I'm going to actually do it without the belt, but if you need the belt and you want to work that way for a while, you can, and then, um, and then you can do this without. So um, just like we started earlier, I'm extending my legs out like I'm standing on a floor in Tadasana, reaching through my heels, and then I'm bringing my right knee up and place the belt on the right foot. So this is Supta Parangustasana. And for right now, I'm just using both sides of the belt, walking both hands up. And you can work on this uh, with your knees straight, taking as much belt as you need to fully extend that leg. If hamstrings, um, tightness in the hamstrings are a big issue for you, uh, go back to the hip maintenance poses and work on that. That will um, help you here. All right, so we're gonna do a little um, work with the leg, taking it in different directions, and this can all be done with the belt, with the foot pushing into the belt, but I'm going to do it without the belt, right? So I just want you to know that if, if you're finding doing this without the belt is really challenging, please use, use the strap around your foot. So just arms out to the side, unless you're using that strap, and we're gonna extend the left leg out and the right leg up, reaching and pushing as if my feet are standing on a floor. Then externally rotate your right thigh. Turn the knee and the toes to turn to the right, and we're going to reach the toes toward the floor up um, in the direction of your shoulder. So if you have a belt here, you're pressing into that belt. The left half of the body is really dynamic. Heel is reaching out. Um, your stabilizing muscles are working to keep the leg here. And then we'll inhale, exhale, bring the leg back up. And we're gonna cross the midline. So if you had a belt, you would hold that with your left hand. And I am rolling onto my left hip as I cross my right leg over. And I'm not attempting to take my foot to the floor. If you had a belt, you would be holding the belt with this hand. And you could rest your arm on the floor as you push your foot into the belt. But for right now, I'm just reaching dynamically through my right foot and out in the opposite direction with my right arm. The left foot, I rolled onto the outer edge of the left foot and I'm reaching out through that foot as well. 
and then take an in breath. Exhale, come back up. Bend the knee and let that leg rest on the floor. Just take a little mini Shavasana and observe how that feels. Okay, bring your legs back into Tadasana. And if you need to realign yourself on the mat, you can. Bring your legs back to Tadasana. Stay dynamic through your right leg. Press as if your right foot is on a floor and bring your left leg up. And again, if you need a belt, you put the belt on your foot and you work on just fully extending that leg up. Without the belt, you're using a lot more of your stabilizing muscles to uh, maintain this and the strength of your legs, which is preparing us for what we're going to do when we're standing up. And in fact, when we, if we just flip this pose over so that the floor was under this foot that's in the air, this would be um, not quite Ardha Chandrasana yet, but um, working our way there. This would be more like uh, Virabhadrasana three. Good, so externally rotate your left leg. If you're using a belt, you hold the belt in just your left hand, your right arm goes out to the right. And I'm going to reach my left tips of my toes toward the floor. So the, the feet are extending out dynamically. And then take a deep in breath Exhale, bring your leg up. And then if you're using a belt, you take the belt in your right hand as you draw your left leg across the midline. Roll onto your right hip. Your left hip comes up, and so it's resting above the right hip. As I reach out with the left leg, the left arm reaches in the other direction. So I have a rotation. This would be like your Parvritta Ardha Chandrasana once we're standing. So if I were to flip this up onto the floor, your right leg would be your standing, uh, no, sorry, your left leg would be your leg you're standing on. Your right leg, which is now resting on the floor, would be like the leg that's in the air. So just kind of fun to flip those around in your mind. Good, inhale, exhale, bring the leg back up. Bend your knee, let the leg rest on the floor, just let your feet flop out to the sides. Take a deep breath. Good. So we're going to um, just bend your knees for a moment, feet on the floor, and sway from side to side. Let's just get a little bit of uh, nice movement through the whole body letting the connected tissue get juiced up, letting your breath flow freely. And then we're gonna roll to one side and use your hands to bring yourself up. And we're gonna come all the way up and play with the pose uh, with a chair. So playing with it standing. So place your chair or a stool or something on your mat. And you're standing in Tadasana, a little bit away from your chair because you're going to bend forward with your hands on your chair. And uh, just check in with your Tadasana for a moment. So I'm going to bend forward at the hips and place my hands on the chair. And we're going to start with some movement in the hip socket. So pressing down through your left heel. So from my left hip into my left heel, so I can lift my right leg up. And right now, we're just going to keep this right knee bent, and I'm going to explore the movement in the left hip socket by taking my right hip up into the air and then level with the other hip. So the right hip and the left hip are level, and then I'm dropping the right hip down. So with that you can see that starts to turn you to the left toward your standing leg. So just play. Lift the right hip up, bring it level, drop it down. And feel, focus your attention right now on the left hip socket. So 
So this is your pelvis rolling around the head of the left femur bone. Good. And let's do the other side. So as you put your right foot down, you're transitioning your weight from your right hip, pressing into your right heel. So strong and stable. You do have the chair and there is weight. You're bearing your weight through this chair. And let's explore the movement of the right hip socket over the head of the right femur bone. By lifting my left hip up in the air and bringing it level and then dropping it a little lower. You may find you have a lot of tightness in this hip that's not letting that hip drop down much. So it's one of the things we really gotta um, begin to free up. Good. So just getting some play in there. Taking a little break anytime you happen to see a chair and doing this uh, will really make people think you're nuts, but also um, it's gonna be great for your hips and for um, beginning to build strength as well as flexibility. Okay, I'm just gonna stay right here and go back to my first side, pressing down into my left heel. My left leg is my standing dynamic leg as I bring my right leg up. I'm trying to lift my right leg to hip level. And we're going to lift the right hip up so I'm turning to the right, my whole torso. Notice I'm keeping my hands on the chair for right now. And this gives us an opportunity with a lot of support to explore the, um, the alignment of the pose and um, begin to build the strength. So I'm pressing through from my left hip into the heel, into the floor, as my right leg fully extends and reaches out from the foot toward the wall as if I could stand on that wall back there with my foot. And I wanna just notice, could I use my legs and my stabilizing muscles, my whole core, to take a little bit of the weight out of my hands? So I didn't say take my hands off the chair, I just said don't drop as much weight into them. Good. And then maybe if you find that there's some freedom, you could put your right hand on the chair back and just kind of spiral that pose open. Good, and then we're gonna turn back to face the floor, bring the right leg down, transition our weight, press from the right hip into the heel and lift your left leg up, and then begin to lift the left hip up. And we're turning to the left. And you keep your, you could look down, you should be able to see your left foot down there, right? If it's back here, you're not gonna see it, so bring it in line with its own hip. Keep your standing hip over your ankle and begin to rely on your legs and your core muscles, your stabilizers, to bear your weight here so you're just doing less with the chair. Your hands can move around a little bit. Right? Play with that. Over time, not maybe today, but days, weeks, months, that starts to free up and you could just take one hand up. Right? So I feel stable enough to take one hand off the chair and move it up. Give me a little support to rotate my body to the left and open up away from the floor. Ardha Chandrasana. And then we'll turn back and bring that leg down. And we're gonna come up to standing and I wanna talk about how to do that to keep your spine safe. I'm gonna reach my hips behind my heels, push the floor with my heels, and at the same time, I'm drawing my abdominal, um, my belly into the front of my spine, really drawing up to support that lumbar spine as I come to standing. And notice how that feels. Good, and exhaling, coming forward, we're gonna play with Paravritta Ardha Chandrasana now. So pressing down through the left heel so your right leg can come up. Think about keeping that foot in line with its own hip, and then we're, Paravritta is a revolved pose, so we're turning toward the standing leg. 
So I'm going to let the right hip drop as I turn to the left. Right, so you can see I'm kind of bending my elbows. And this is a very challenging pose. So if this feels like just crazy, work with the other things first and eventually this pose will begin to um, unfold for you. So I'm dynamically rotating, dropping the right hip down, reaching um, my left ribs up toward the ceiling. And maybe you have a free hand, you could move one arm up to the chair back, and then we'll turn back to face the seat. Bring your right leg down, we'll go to the other side. Pressing through the right leg, bring the left leg up. Let your left hip drop down and rotate dropping the left hip, the belly can turn toward the right, the ribs. Right, so you're just exploring this spiraling action while still trying to keep that leg dynamically reaching out and back and up. All right, so you could do this with both hands on the seat of the chair or one hand could walk up. You could even put your hand on your hip and then we'll turn back to face the seat. Bring the leg down, reach your hips back, push the floor away with your heels as you draw the belly up to the front of the spine and come back up to standing. And notice how that feels. So that's a great Ardachandrasana play with the chair. We're gonna go to the wall. So you could um, possibly use a block here. Uh, if you um, don't have a wall, like I said, bring your mat right in front of your dining room table. We're going to stand with our hips kind of touching the wall or the edge of your table. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to my left and say left. If you can mirror me and do that or, um, you know, you don't mirror me and go to your left, um, that'll probably be... Uh, probably be ideal so you can listen to my instructions. So we're going to step the feet apart, turn the left foot 90, all right? My right foot is coming away from the wall. See how I st stepped away from the wall a little bit um, and I swung the heel out. So I'm going to bend through the right knee, keeping my hip kind of sliding against the wall or whatever it is I have here, the, the table, and I'm leaning out um, over my front leg with my left hand on the block so that I can get my weight over my left heel and begin to lift my back leg up, right? So I'm noticing I'm a little too close to the wall because as, I'm, as I move, my hip is pushing the wall and sending me this way. So feel free to adjust your foot out as you need to. And then um, you slowly lift that back leg up so I'm standing on my left leg and my left hip is touching the wall. I have a block underneath my left hand or you could even have a chair here. If your hamstrings are a little longer, you can certainly go lower. The block is about making up for the hamstrings. So, you know, find the amount of height that you need to keep your legs straight. Right? This leg does not go to the wall. It stays in line with its own hip. So if your foot is coming back this way, and this is a great reason to use the walls to get clear on how this leg stays in line with its own hip. However, your shoulders, they can begin to move back toward the wall behind you. And this, the wall is great because it gives you an opportunity to really explore the alignment of the pose without being worried about falling over. Good. To come out of it, bend your standing leg, reach with your back foot. Reach, reach, reach until your foot is on the floor. And then pushing with both feet, you bring yourself up. And you turn back to the front and step your feet together. And just notice how that feels. We're going to do the other side. So stepping your feet apart, you're touching the wall or the edge of the table with your hips. And as you turn to your side, you might have to adjust that a little bit. Um, this foot is further away from the wall, okay? So I'm not trying to stand on a tightrope here. And then bending my front knee so my weight is over my front heel, reaching out for my block, 
And I'm just noticing I need to move my foot away from the wall. So play with that, right? The idea is that we can be touching the wall and have that support. Uh, we don't want to be pushed forward by it, of course. And we don't want to be leaning into it. Um, and what I mean by that is we don't want to be so far away and we're kind of just leaning, right? We want to stand on this leg. And I'm going to press through my heel to lift the back leg up. And if I had a flat wall, of course, I've got this ledge here, my right shoulder might be against the wall even, right? And, uh, but the left leg that's in the air is not on the wall. It's in line with its own hip. Both legs are acting as if they're on a floor, pushing down or out and away into that imaginary floor, adjusting your block as you need. And then your left shoulder can move back toward the wall because you are spiraling and turning away from the floor. And if it feels okay to take your arm up, you do. And this is also great practice for when you're in the center of the room, how you begin to transition from only being able to look at the floor to coming up. So I like to, with my eyes looking at the floor, I look at my foot that's on the floor and then up along my body to see this foot that's in the air, which is good, because that means it's not back here. And then eventually you can look up. Okay, let's come down. Bend your standing leg, let your back foot land, pushing through your front heel to bring yourself up. Come back to standing. And notice how that feels. All right, let's do Parvrita. Parvrita, Ardha Chandrasana with the wall is great. So again, standing with my back to the wall and turning my left foot parallel to the wall, letting my right foot come away from the wall a bit. And I'm coming forward. I wanna keep my weight over my left heel and um, my left side is slightly touching the wall. Right? So your right hand is going to go on a block as you lift your right leg up, and then you can turn to face the wall. So I'm letting this right hip drop down. Right? It's not level. It starts to drop because the rotation is going to start in my hips. And then I turn to the wall, and if it's a flat wall, your hand can just walk up the wall here to help you experience the, the full pose and the alignment with a lot of support. Good. And then we'll turn back to face the floor. Bend your standing leg and let your back leg land. Push with the feet to bring yourself up. Turn back to the front and let's do the other side. So bring your block over. Your right foot is parallel to the wall. You're gonna lift that back heel up so you can bend down and place your left hand on the block. My right hip is just grazing the wall, even my right shoulder kind of touching the wall a bit as I explore bringing that left leg up, adjusting the block to whatever height you need. And then you're turning your body to face the wall. So I'm letting my left hip drop down a bit as I spiral my torso to the wall. Actively twisting. Good, and then when you're ready to come down, you turn back to face the floor, let your back foot land, push with your feet to bring yourself up, turn the feet back to the front, and just stand in Tadasana to observe the effects. Okay, so let's try this pose in the middle of the floor. If you don't feel ready for that, that's fine. You have options, right? The chair, the wall, and this is just a way of progressing the pose to working with all of these things to get to the center of the room. So uh, have a block handy. Stand in the center of your mat in the mountain pose. And we're gonna step our feet apart, 
stretch our arms out. We're starfish. From the center, reaching out through the periphery, through my legs, through my arms, through the tail, through the crown of the head, and just expand. Now let's turn the right foot 90 degrees, swing the back heel out, bend in your knee. You can put your left hand on your hip, bending your knee to the ankle, and then just lifting your back foot and walking forward till you can feel your weight over your standing foot, right over that front leg. Push through the heel as you lift your back leg up. And, and make a decision, you know, decide how much block you need uh, to make up for any tightness in your hamstrings. You want your knees straight. To be in a pose like this is way too much muscular effort. We want to rely on our bones. So I'm centering my weight over my right ankle and heel, pushing into the earth, rising up out of the earth. My left leg is doing a similar thing from the hip, reaching out through the heel, through the ball of the foot, particularly the inner foot toward the wall behind me. Crown of the head reaching the other direction. Your arm can come up if you like. And you can play, if you're ready for this, uh, with the eyes looking along the front of your body to that leg that's in the air. You should be able to see that foot there. It shouldn't be too far back behind you. And then maybe eventually to the room in front of you. Good. Let's come down. Bend your standing leg. Reach with that foot that was in the air and push with your heel to come up. Turn the feet back to the front. Take a moment to just be in Tadasana. Notice how that feels. Good. Let's do the other side. So step your feet apart. Be that starfish. Expand out into the periphery. And the periphery can actually come back into the center. And you have many limbs here. Include your tail and head with that. Let's turn the left foot 90 degrees. And bending that front knee, grab your block, walk it forward, and then hop that back foot forward, right? So over time, you're going to learn how to glide forward and up. But for right now, you can just bring that back foot forward until you can find that, uh, your weight over that heel and push through your heel, extending the legs completely. That means you need to have the right height of block if you need one. Both legs are reaching out as if they're both standing on a floor. And you could take the top arm up if you'd like or hand on your hip. You can keep your eyes looking at the floor. And if you feel ready to start playing with uh, looking up or out, just trail your eyes down the front of your body and see if you can see your foot there. And then eventually you can transition to looking straight ahead. And eventually the head can go up, but um, the head going upward can put a lot of tension in your neck, so we don't need to um, worry about that, doing that. Okay, let's come on down. Press with your feet to bring yourself up. Step back together. Okay, now I have Parvita. So, back to the first side. Step your feet apart. We're going to turn the right foot 90. Oops. We're going to put your block over on the left half of the mat. And we're going to lift the back heel up and turn so we can place the block under our left hand. I'm walking the block forward of the toes. As I lift my back leg up, your right hand can be on your hip. Let your right hip drop down so that you can rotate, starting with the pelvis, rotating and turning to the right. Dynamic left leg, reaching. Squeeze the thigh to keep the knee straight. You can stretch your right arm up if you'd like and can stay on your hip. And then we'll turn back to the floor Bend your standing leg and let your back foot land. Push the floor away as you come up. 
and we'll do the other side. So put your block on the right half of your mat if you're going to stand on your left leg. Turn your left foot 90 degrees. Lift up your back heel so you can turn to face um, the short end of your mat and put your right hand on your block as you bring your right leg up. Your left hand can go on your hip and then you begin to the rotation through the right hip, dropping down, the belly spiraling, the rib cage spiraling. And if it feels okay to bring the left arm up, you can, otherwise it can stay on your hip. And you can just really work with what's going on in the legs. Very dynamic, challenging pose. So please be patient with yourself as you build up to that. We bend the standing leg to let your back foot land. Push through the heel and come back up to standing. So I hope, like me, you feel really well wrung out. Strong and powerful legs. Strong body. And so from here you could go on. You can do downward dog. You could do a number of standing poses and just kind of weave your way through um, a practice. Uh, I'm going to wrap this up with Uttanasana, standing forward bend, which um, kind of quiets the nervous system down. So uh, if this is the end of your practice, you definitely want to finish with something like this. Uh, so bending forward at the hips, place your hands on the chair. The chin comes in. So we're letting the back line lengthen. If the chair is higher than you need, you could take the hands lower, maybe to a block. And I'm taking a height under my hands that I can keep my knees straight, because I really want a nice, even stretch through the back line of the body. So I'm bringing the floor up to me. Now this block, of course, can be switched to many different sides accommodating you and, and you may transition lower and lower just within this pose in the moment or you may need you know time day after day after day of practicing that this eventually you know transitions a little bit lower and deeper and this is not like tadasana where my weight is in my heels the my upper body is hanging forward over the earth so there's going to be more weight in the ball of the foot, but I'm reaching down through my heels, right? So I am also trying not to let my toes grip the floor, but I do feel more weight in the ball of my foot than my heel. And I'm drawing the lower belly up into the back body. So I'm curl forward, releasing the base of the skull, bringing the chin in, Letting the eyes look toward the heart and breathing. And then when we're ready to come up, you can place your hands on your thighs. Reach your hips behind your heels. Keep the lower belly supported, the lumbar spine supported with the lower belly drawing up as you push through your heels and come up. So that's um, Ardha Chandrasana, Parvrita Ardha Chandrasana. Thanks for joining me, and I hope you have a great rest of your week practicing, and I'll see you again soon. Namaste.